opportunity, uh, longtime faculty at City College of San Francisco. Please do not sign this ENA. Do not allow the PUC to do the job that the now much discredited and accredited commission of community and junior colleges, ACCJC, tried to do and failed. Please consider the damaged reputation of the ACCJC, which tried to destroy one of our most beloved institutions, City College of San Francisco. The reputation of PUC is now at stake. In the ACCJ's attempt to close the college by threatening to withdraw accreditation, the commission seriously damaged enrollment through bad publicity generated by false charges. Currently, the college has been vindicated with full accreditation, and the commission had to clean house by firing the person who led the unfair campaign against the college. Due to the institution of Free City this fall, our enrollment is once again climbing to healthy levels. Now enters the PUC, willing to grant this ENA to developers who propose building 1,300 plus units in the Balboa Reservoir. The loss of parking from this bloated project will cause our enrollment to plummet again. Once the ENA is signed, the PUC will no longer be able to talk to the college about solutions for the parking problem created by the development. There was no doubt that some truly affordable housing can be built on the site with reconfigured parking to meet the needs of low-income students with two to three jobs and children to drop off and pick up. The current proposal, however, only offers 33% housing affordable to people with faculty and staff incomes. Do not allow the PUC to do the job that the now much discredited ACCJC tried to do and fail. Um, 22 Balboa Reservoir CAC meetings from day one have felt like a done deal. Not is as referred to in your slides a robust two-year process. And in fact, over the two years of meetings, Newcomer after newcomer has said, why does this process feel as if it were a done deal already? Those poor newcomers. The rest of us just shake our heads and watch their dawning disbelief. It's been an effort not at community feedback, but community buy-in. And folks are not buying in. Your WSIP project paid for the first parking study of City College done by ACOM in 2014. Um, for the Balboa Reservoir project uh, on two non-bid uh, invoices. That was right in the middle of the state takeover of City College. The other parking study included is the TDM and viewable on, currently viewable on Planning's website, which gathered data the last week of class, May 2016. We call that dead week. Evening parking data begins at 10.30 and half hour after night classes. We have been told for a year and a half that more data will be taken. Okay, great, when? Your ENA has four blank exhibits. Those will be filled out after you approve the ENA today, and most likely they will contain information about what drilling and staging will need to be done by the developer. So I guess we will all be surprised to find out that what that will be. Your land has still, oh, including you guys, will be surprised. Your land still has not been declared surplus. The ENA will throw a monkey wrench into that process. You are standing in front of a freight train. And if you actually try to stop this thing today by sending the ENA back for re revisions, yes, you'll stand in front of a freight train, but the freight train is gonna roll over a lot of good San Franciscans in a great college. I have been called Mr. Hustle, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate all the work that you are doing. Uh, you're a public utility. City College of San Francisco is the equivalent of a public utility. You pipeline water to the user. We, City College pipelines education to the developing uh, community and in interests of the labor market. Uh, what we have here is a hostile act. <clears throat> what I mean by that, two times you and we voters pass bond issues to build a performing arts and education center on a part of City College's parking lot. Consciously in the planning of City College is the outcome that parking will be reduced as we build that wonderful facility passed two times by us, the voters. Developers know this. Avalon already got their footprint in, in the backyard. Of, the, of this community. How much more do they want? With the knowledge that City College is planning 
of Performing Arts and Education Center. A previous agreement between you guys and the college in 1991 where there was an exchange of property. And I suggest that before you go forward with this kind of agreement, you really look into the precedent set in um, procedures that are already in place from a very similar situation um, 30, 45 years ago. Um, so shouldn't the seeming rush on the part of you right now to accept this private development be postponed at least until these, these, uh, res this research can be done, um, checked out for the appropriate legal opinions? Uh, some insist the college has been legally and sufficiently involved in this current decision, but I think that can be challenged on the grounds that those who supposedly represented the college interests did so primarily while acting as imposed administrators and special trustees during the years of the now proven illegal takeover of the college. In addition, many of these uh, actual individuals representing the college has since left or been removed from the district. And again, I think um, any really legal fair reading would point out that the college really has not had proper input since 2012. Um, legal challenges may come from a variety of sources. And for that reason, I think it would be more prudent of you, the PUC, um, to, um, to postpone this decision. And um, surely if you do, uh, for even only a few months, there would be time for some of these questions that you're hearing today to become more available. Um, the entire future of the college is at stake. Time should be taken to do the right thing for 25,000 to 30,000 students affected by um, the land which has been used by them since 1946. And I want to say, previously today, I, I really applaud you for the care for fish in the dam situation up north. I hope you have similar care for students. Speakers, but also I'm not really that reluctant to move it forward. At the end of the day, we've been working on housing for the middle class and the uh, lower income and for anybody in San Francisco for years and years and years. And I don't think that this particular conversation really always belongs at the Public Utilities Commission, but at the same time, this we're in a housing crisis. It's a crisis. And I, I enjoyed the opportunity to work with the teachers union and all the other unions when we did Proposition D out at the San Francisco, San Francisco Giants development, which was also a similar breakdown, which included a low income housing component and an, an inclusionary housing component for the middle class. But that's not what we really do here. What's telling to me is that when I reach out to a, a planning commissioner and I say, what conversations have you had, because that happened today, they were meeting with Supervisor Cohen to make sure that the labor standards would be attached to this site. And they got assurances, members of the building trades got assur assurances that the Office of Labor Standards and for Enforcement would have authority over this site, that we would know that we would have a prevailing wage rate for any work that gets done. And those workers matter too. So there are oftentimes competing interests between the teachers and those other workers. I can say this with absolute confidence. I'm always available. I did not get a telephone call from the teachers union, despite our very, very close working relationship. I also sit on the San Francisco Labor Council Executive Committee. I want to associate myself with the comments that were made earlier with respect to the resolution that I have in my hand, and I'm asking the secretary to make sure that this resolution, resolution is included as a, as a packet moving forward on this issue. I'm still going to support the item because I did take it upon myself weeks and weeks and weeks ago to meet with a couple of members of the Board of Trustees, none of whom are in the room right now, and had a conversation about the parking. See, the problem is every single place that we go where we want to build housing, where we have a housing crisis, there's always some different reason for not doing it. It might be views, it might be the sun, whatever it is, there's always a reason to not build housing. But at the end of the day, we know we all need it, but nobody can get there. So you just have to have the courage, acknowledge that there's a crisis and move it forward. At the Public Utilities Commission, it's real simple. We have an obligation to make sure that we get market rate for this land. City College and those trustees have no intention whatsoever of paying market rate for the land. And our, our obligation is to the ratepayers. So I'm asking that this resolution be included. Even though it didn't go through the executive committee, I have a lot of respect for the men and women in organized labor. But with respect to the building trades, they've been getting it done at the Planning Commission, at the Board of Supervisors f for about two years now. The folks at City College have been focusing on their effort 
to have the tax on the mansions, which netted them the money that they needed to save the college, and I applaud them for that. But I don't see enough here to not move this forward in this way today. So I'll support the measure. Uh, with that, do I have a second? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 And I'd like to make a comment, please. <clears throat> Well, it's the lack of concern for the students. They're a little bit of lip service, but the, the last comment from one of the saying that, oh, there's always somebody going to oppose housing. Oh, it could be, it could be shadows. It could be a butterfly. This is 20, 30,000 students. How dare he compare these two? And there are still undocumented, because I've asked at every meeting I've gone to with these people, how many numbers of unoccupied units are in San Francisco? They don't give me the answer. And we know that the real estate people are raising all the, the bar by having all kinds of undocumented, empty units that gouge our people. That's just terrible. And how would it impact the Creative Arts Center if they built uh, all these, about 1,300 units? Well, <laughs> the just getting it all built in a timely fashion is going to be very tricky. I hope that at least we can get a 10-year moratorium on the housing because we'll need the swing space when we build the auditorium, which is for the whole community in addition to the students. And then where will the audiences for 650-seat auditorium come at night? Where are they going to park? Are they all going to come over from the Muni to go to a concert? I don't think so. We had Bernie Sanders here a couple of months ago. All the size auditorium we have is 286 seats. There were 1,500 RSVPs. Fortunately, it was a nice day, and we met outside, but that's a scandal. We're the only school in the whole system that doesn't have an auditorium. We're out of compliance with accreditation standards. It's got to be done fast, the auditorium, I, I, and the whole complex, yes. Alex, you're a, a neighbor in, uh, in the area uh, where the, the college is, City College. That's your community. Uh, what are your views on the development of 1,300 units in that area? Well, I think it's, it's rather congested already. We've had several new developments already. We had the Mercy Housing Project, which is a good project. It helped a lot of poor people and kids that are coming out of transition. We also had a project by Avalon Bay next door with the Whole Foods store, and that's pretty busy there, several units. They rent between $3,000 and $4,000 a month for those units. And then down the street at Miramar and Ocean Avenue, we have another development. Those are condos, and they're selling for $1.2 million for the smaller ones. I don't know what the high-end are, ones are. Then we also have 280 Brighton. That's several units. And then we have at Capitol Street to Faxton, we have another 60 units of housing going in. So I think we have our fair share of housing already, and that the Red Balboa Reservoir would be better used for the college and for the students and the teachers. And I'm not opposed to any type of housing for teachers in San Francisco. But if we're going to build some housing there, it would have to be for teachers only because they just don't make enough money to live in San Francisco. And, you know, one of the concerns is the congestion already. And everybody says, well, it's a transit hub. Well, it's not a transit hub. We have a few buses and we have a streetcar, one that runs downtown and one that runs over towards the BART. And if you live there and you see in the morning the traffic jams, sometimes it's impossible for the fire department to get out of the firehouse at uh, Station 15. And it, it, it's really dangerous here. <coughs> I mean, if we, we have to come up with a better transit plan before we keep talking about higher density and housing. And, you know, I mean, they're talking about they want to build 10-story buildings in Stonestown for housing and all that. But who's really getting this housing? And what is the market rate for the Balboa Reservoir? I mean, how do you put a price tag on it? Is it, it's 17 acres. Is that what, four or $500 million? And how much is the developer paying for that? Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not really sure, you know, what kind of deal they have with Avalon Bay. All I know is in San Francisco, you know, a lot of people claim it's a pay to play city. So who knows who, how much he paid to play? You know, I, I mean, maybe, you know, if the people in Burnell Heights want to build a city college, maybe we should build up on Burnell Hill. Let's put some condos up there in 10-story buildings and see how they like it. 
So you think they're they're doing this because of the neighborhood? Well, what about the ye? Your supervisor is supporting it. Uh, there are people who say that they have to have housing, and this is a solution. Have the use that land for uh, for condos. I'm not opposed to building housing for people that need housing. What I'm saying is that we've already overbuilt on Ocean Avenue and that we should explore some other areas in the city. Everybody should get their fair share. And we've, we've given our fair share in the last couple of years. And a lot of our people in our neighborhood are being priced out. You know, they, they get evicted the first time they miss the payment, they're out. And it's a change in neighborhood. You know, the people in Westwood, they're, they've been there for years. And where I am on the other side of Holloway, we've been there for years. And it's, it's just, you know, it's a good community. It's, it's well diversified in that. But they need room for the tech workers are busing in, you know. We have tech workers. A lot more. And one of the tech workers at Avalon is leaving because he doesn't like it around there. He says it's too congested and it's too crowded. <laughs> and Avalon is giving him a place in Walnut Creek where he'll be a little happier. And it's a little warmer. So he's moving out there. He's a self-employed tech worker. And uh, him and I walked together in the morning. And he, he, he told me at first he liked it. And then he said, I can't take it here no more. It's too crowded. And I, you know, I'm, as a San Franciscan, I feel it's a little too crowded myself. And also, you know, it, there's going to be another huge project in the Excelsior District where the old uh, mortuary was. I think it's Valenti and Parenti. And they're going to put in several units there and a Safeway store. You, you think it's out of control? Well, I, I don't... Mean, I, mean, I mean, basically, why do you have to have thousands of new condos, million-dollar condos in San Francisco? Why? I don't know why. And I don't believe that there's a housing... I think, you know, a lot of the housing crisis in San Francisco is caused by Airbnb and, and all these kind of things. It's like the traffic jams are caused by Uber and Lyft. I mean, they're everywhere. Well, who's supposed to regulate them? Well, the mayor's office. I think it's the mayor's office or the PUC. I'm not bothered. Are they doing that? I, not in my opinion, you know. But I'm, that's just one small opinion, you know. And I, I mean, it's just, we really have a traffic problem in San Francisco. I mean, just drive around any neighborhood and you won't be able to get through. And, you know, everybody says, well, you know, you should learn to ride a bicycle. Well, I do ride a bicycle and I have just as much hard time on my bicycle as I have in my car. I walk. I walk everywhere, and anybody who knows me knows that. Do, and you th do you think the people that run San Francisco are concerned about the congestion, the gridlock that we have in San Francisco? And the, I do the not. Danger? I do not. I don't really think they care. And I think if they did care, they would view things a little bit different. You know, I, I mean, I think that they, you know, I think there's a lot of good people in San Francisco in politics and in the offices and all that. But I think sometimes that it's easy to get sidetracked by developers and money and and all those kind of things. I mean, it's like next next to the uh, Court of Appeals, I think it's the seventh in Mission. They want to bring in prefab housing for the homeless people and all that. You know, why should we put the homeless people in subs and you know anything less than we would live in? If we're going to build for the homeless, let's build them regular housing like everybody else. And if we're spending, I think it's $235 million a year on 6,000 people, I think we could build some houses for them, nice ones. You know, and, and I think what we should build next before we build anything is a mental health facility to help the homeless people that are mentally ill. And, and they don't have enough have been thrown out on the street the after hospital. Reagan. Yeah. yeah, I think they just opened up a section over there with 10 beds. That's just not going to get it. We probably need a couple of thousand, you know, and and those are the things that we should be exploring before we build more housing and higher density and all that. I mean, it's the man, you know, we're turning this into Manhattan. It's, we're going to lose our charm. We're going to lose our beauty and we're going to lose the people that are real San Franciscans. They're going to leave here. They're doing it already. They can't afford to stay. Well, the, the building trades union, one guy says that uh, it's jobs. Union skill jobs, good, good working class jobs. Well, there's a lot of jobs and there's a lot of way to create jobs. And we're always going to have building trades jobs. And we've always had building trades jobs. And I, I don't think not building 1300 condos, it might not even be building trades jobs because I think Avalon in the past has used a lot of non-union. 
you know. So I don't think that they're going to hire union people on, on the project. I could be wrong. Maybe they've turned over a new leaf and maybe they're going to go 100% union and pay everybody prevailing wages and hire from the neighborhood. We've got a lot of kids in that neighborhood that could use a job. Minorities, people of color, decent people, women, you know. Let's put them to work. If, if, if we're going to build it, let's put them all to work but for the right rates. But shouldn't that be a city college property? I mean, it's shouldn't, my shouldn't understanding. Well, here's what I was told that they were going to build an amphitheater. And I was all on board with the amphitheater and some low-cost housing for teachers. Great. You want to build that? Build it. That we could live with. But to just turn it into a money factory for a developer is just insanity. I mean, these guys already are renting their units on Ocean Avenue for between $3,000 and $4,000. And there's, it looks to me like there's a lot of people going in and out of there because I see moving vans there every morning. Almost every morning I see a moving van of people leaving, you know. It could be Airbnb. Just uh, I have knows? no idea what it is. I know there is Airbnbs in our neighborhood and there never was before. And, uh, and I think that the Airbnbs are certainly hurting the housing in San Francisco. You know, It's good for the tourists, though. Well, but the neighborhoods. I think hotels. The I think if you're really concerned about hotel, if you're concerned about union wages and benefits and that, you should be against Airbnb, and be for the hotels downtown. That's what hotels are for. Are to put people to work and pay a livable wage. Who's getting anything out of an Airbnb? Who knows? We found out that there's a lot of you know underhanded deals with Airbnb.